Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I am delighted and privileged to welcome an old friend from almost three and a half decades ago, one of the tallest leaders from the world of advertising and marketing, and a manager who's turned an entrepreneur, Mr. Ishan Rayana from Mumbai, India. Ishan, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ashutosh. Uh, Ishan is the founder of Raina Advisory Services. He was earlier the founder and CEO of Havas Media. He was also the founder of Out of Home Media and Ignite Digital Services. Ishan, what an amazing journey you have had. But before we get into any questions, tell me about what made you move from your comfortable top management leadership of an agency global boards to become an entrepreneur? So the real truth, Ashutosh, is I can convert it into strategy, but I can, it's really, if you go back to India in the early 1990s, Mm. uh, as India was changing, opportunities came up, which we didn't even realize where they would take us. Correct early to mid 90s so actually it's what it's the ecosystem that changed the bahal that changed the environment that changed and it it threw up certain opportunities some people took it some people didn't i still laugh and say it's it's a series of accidents Mm -hmm. you know and uh, to basically just give you a little flavor Mm -hmm. i think that if you divide India into mid nineties, early two thousands, and then the second decade of two thousands, and now mm. every five seven years, the, the 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 sort of environment is pivoting, and I think that my generation, you me, were part of that first pivot mm. of the early to mid nineties. You know, there was no private equity then; they were basically strategic guys who wanted to come in, looking for managers who were willing to become entrepreneurs. Correct. And that's really the essence of the conversion. Uh, So it was a happy accident, but at the same time, you have to be mentally ready for some discomfort. Mm. And I think the difference between people in my generation at that time is, were you willing to give up something steady and jump into an unknown or were you not willing to do it? Mm. So I think that it was really a product of the environment and some personal characteristics of say, you know, how bad can it get Correct. You know, kind of thing. Correct. Mm-hmm. Correct. So tell me, you know, I also made a similar transition. Yes. Uh, I'd love to get your views on what were some of your learnings and have there ever been any regrets? So it's again, I've done three gigs. Mm-hmm. Okay. The first one, the, the Havaswa was an absolute party. Correct. Mm. It was a soft landing. It was a joint venture with the global company. Mm. They had a majority. You know, I had 40%. I could give some to the employees. So maybe 30. Mm. So I think that was very blessed because I had no global experience because of diversity. I think they wanted somebody in Asia. It was either me or the Chinese and they took me. So I landed up on a global board without really understanding the US or Mm -hmm. Latin America or Europe. Mm -hmm. So those seven, 10 years was for me accelerated learning. Mm -hmm. And I went in for that. I think the wealth creation was a happy byproduct. Mm -hmm. But I was like a you know, kid in a candy store, you know, discussing acquisitions, discussing this, sharing the Middle East, doing something in Asia, flying. So I would say that was a very soft landing and a very lucky landing. The second one, I didn't really run, which was in social media, etc. Early days, had it ups and downs, but was a very good company to have. The third one was very difficult, which is the out-of-home digital. And I think that if I had a lesson, it would be after 50, don't get ambitious and start stuff again. You know, do it in your mid-30s and 40s okay. because you, you lose courage and you lose, in, in your, in, in, not to loosely put it, you lose entrepreneurial ability. Mm. Like 
take me 60 days to take a decision. Whereas when I started in Havas Media in 90 to 120 days, I hired 90 people, got government permission, FIBB. Mm. The first time a global company was allowed to do a startup yeah. in India, mm. okay, with a majority, in fact, that changed the rules, mm. uh, went in front of an FIBB committee. I don't know what I was doing. Mm. I think the beauty of being young, and I'm coming to that because I think that it, I see it in today's unicorns. You know, the beauty of being young is that you have very little to lose. Correct. And therefore, your risk-taking ability, your, you know, uh, speed learning ability, your adaptability is so much stronger. So there have been some good and bad. I think that my life on entrepreneurship got actually tougher as I got older with my new staff. It should have been the other way around. The first one should have been very tough and then the other should have been easier. With me, it was kind of the reverse. You know, the first one was a party and you know it had a four-year break-even. I made money in the first year. So you have good friends in India. India is your country. You've been working. You call up people and say, I need help. And they generally help. Correct. You know, so I think that mixed bag, uh, not all good. Mm -hmm. But I think that the older I got, the tougher it got. Absolutely. Of my three gigs, I would just say that first was a party. Second one, I was only chairman. I made other people do the work. Third, I wanted to be a hands-on CEO again. I had a very rough ride. I understand. And I can empathize with everything that you're saying because I started Guardian when I was 46. Yeah. And, uh, it was fantastic days. They were very rough days. So mm -hmm. I can fully appreciate what you're saying. So let's let's now move to uh, a little bit of advertising and branding. Um, you know, there is a lot of debate that keeps going on on what makes a brand tick. You as a person who's the, a guru in advertising, branding, I'd love to get your perspective for a very young audience. So the first thing I would tell a young audience is don't, agree or believe anything I say. Okay. Uh, because every five, seven years is a metamorphosis. Mm. You know, when I see social media today mm. and I, I compare it with almost 20 years ago when I launched the Ignite thing, it was lucky that private equity had entered at that point of time. Everybody got a happy exit at 16x and everybody was happy or 15x or whatever. I don't even remember. But it's you have to basically be flexible and adaptable. Mm. Uh, and there are some people who are young who are very good at it. I was seeing an ex-colleague of mine, in fact, who worked with me at Havas. He started something called You and Mr. Jones or something mm -hmm. like that. And it's a $2 billion company. Wow. But they've wow. gone the tech route. They have to redefine. I think what's happening is that the, the first thing about marketing and advertising today, mm -hmm. earlier it used to change every 10 years, then every 15 years, 10 years, 5 years, and now every 3 years. Mm -hmm. And the ability to pivot into, you see, all marketing companies, all brand marketeers, all MBA institutes teach you how the companies pivot. Yeah. They don't teach you how you should pivot. Absolutely right. And I think that if I was to give an insight to somebody, we talk about consumer behavior. How do you manage your own behavior? We talk about consumer trends. How do you manage your own trends of how what you're going to be three, four years from now? Like, Today, artificial intelligence, I think psychometrics, these are going to be very key parts of brands. Correct. In my time, we used to do focus groups. I know. Okay, so what I'm saying is that uh, the ability to be agile, the ability to invest in yourself, mm. and the ability to actually understand where customers are going mm. and not look in the rear view mirror. Mm. is going to create successful brands, is going to create... I mean, I just give some quick examples. Look at Nike. Mm. Okay. It was a brand created an anticipation Correct. of where the markets were going to go. Mm. Uh, look at... Um, I have a friend, Kamal, who runs something called Fireside Ventures mm. out of Bangalore, which is basically invested in only internet. I mean, they may go hybrid, but essentially it was only internet sales of consumer products. Mm -hmm. And some of their big successes are like Boat, are like, you know, which yeah. is... It's a, yeah, the headphones. So, the headphones. So there are these brands which you wouldn't have thought about Correct. five, seven years ago. Correct. 
And somebody smart is anticipation. So I think that I would use anticipation, um, investing in yourself for new stuff. You know, I'll give you an example. I mean, the, you know, the Rinsha, the company I'm involved, mm-hmm. okay, uh, they keep telling me, but you know all this, mm-hmm. okay? It's in content and it's a new age content and YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I keep telling them, you know, I really don't, mm-hmm. okay? And they have a bunch of 25 year olds who teach me. And every time I say, give me a tutorial of this later, mm-hmm. the managing director and chairman look at me and say, come on, Isha. I said, you know, I'm serious, guys. You know, I said, I know how the customer will think as in the client. Okay, so if you ask me what will Netflix buy, why will they buy or Amazon or something, I get that. But if I get why, for example, let's talk about this now. If I get why podcasts are creating a fight between Spotify and Amazon, Mm. okay, I don't get it. Mm. And they're obviously seeing something of where the customer is going. In my mind, you know, the FM radio was meant to drive to work. Mm. It was not a global phenomenon. Podcasts are a global phenomenon growing at 50 to 100% a year. Correct, correct. Traditional advertising is growing at 12% a year. Every time they get double digits, these articles in economic times. So there's an old ecosystem all happy with each other. Okay, and then there's 90% below that which is evolving every three, five years. You know, you're so right. I've, I've compared this to an iceberg. It is an iceberg. Absolutely. You know, what is be- below the, the, yeah. the community? And that leads to me, uh, me to my, the next question. You know, four, four decades ago and three decades ago, when we spoke about advertising and communication, we either got a big Bollywood star or we, we've got a film, uh, you know, cricket star or some star to tell people what to buy. Today, in the world of social media, in a democratized world, we've got this incredible network of influencers. And, you know, they could be 22-year-olds, 25-year-olds, uh, you know, who have 10 million, 20 million followers. Funny so you what is say. your perspective on how are they, so first, adding value, and second, how are they changing brands? So it's funny you should say that. Because the last tutorial I asked for, I thought it was going long, and I'm glad you asked this as a follow-up, was actually on influencers, mm. you know, because Renshan was the largest influencer management, marketing, whatever you call it, kind of uh, organizations. And I don't understand influencers. You're absolutely right. In my mind, it was Amitabh Bachchan as an influencer. <laughs> yes. You know, Sachin as an influencer. We used to first say, uh, Amir Khan, these are all people I've used in the past as quote-unquote, brand ambassadors or models, depending on how you want to look at it. And uh, today there is, I, I won't take names, but, you know, I don't want to be sort of... Uh, no, absolutely. But there, are people in, there are people in Rurki, hmm. this guy in Rurki, who has more followers every day on his YouTube than Amitabh Bachchan. Hmm. More followers than someone like Veer Das, which is part of the Rinshan family. Weird ass, you know, we have an investment in that. But what I'm saying is that And, you know, it's, the truth is, it's in every sphere of life. Okay. You look at the new age entrepreneurs, you look at the new age influencers, they're not coming from the metros. They're not coming from what we were comfortable with in the past. So you may criticize and say Bharat and all that. I don't know what's going on, Mm -hmm. but certainly something powerful is going on. And that's the 90% of the iceberg which is coming in and making it a tsunami for people who don't understand. Mm. And at the same time, for people who understand, they think it's logical. So that's what I meant about how are you investing in what's going to happen? How are you investing in yourself in understanding of what's going to happen? Well said. And uh, a follow-up question to that again, Ishan, is that for someone who has seen the major platforms like the newspapers, magazines, television, uh, cinema advertise, billboards, right? Today, it's all on a tiny little phone and your communication has to be 15 to 20 or 30 seconds. How are agencies or advertisers and brands adapting to these changes? Quite badly. 
Huh. Which is why the influencers are not doing so well. Right. <laughs> we got a straight up answer. Right. However, to be fair, uh-huh. Uh-huh. okay, to be fair, what has changed is the delivery. Mm. Okay. Uh, the power of the idea. Mm. Okay. Now, the truth is when you when you create the idea, it should be something that can travel across how people are using it. Mm. So there's no point creating an idea which can only be expressed in print or okay. only be expressed in broadcast or only be expressed in outdoor. After that, I was also part of the generation where print moved to television and we had copywriters which would write a television script mm. the way that, uh, that people wrote print ads mm. and they used to bomb. We had English speaking, very bright people who tried to make funny English kind of television commercials. And that that vacuum created the rise of what I call the Hindi boys. And if you look today, the two most famous creative people in advertising, whether it is Piyush Pandey or whether it is Prasun Joshi, came out of that bunch. Mm-hmm. Their minds were in Jaipur and things like that. And when I started my career, everybody's mind was in London. So they, they were able to take that dramatic shift mm. into what was then India mm. and become hugely successful. Mm. And I remember Prasoon would show me Geets that he wrote. Mm-hmm. And it was funny because I was one of the few people who was equally comfortable in English and Hindi. And I could at least relate to these guys. Other people would say, ah, I don't like, we are the hep crowd. Where are they compared to where these guys are? Mm. So... I think that this influencer gang, this, this gang, they're going to overtake the people who, who, who manage brands mm. unless those people have the humility to learn from them. Correct. Correct. Very well said. And, you know, it's very interesting. You said that you ask your young colleagues to uh, give you a tutorial. I tell, my, I tell my young team, and mm. the, the, the leader of my young team is only 22, and I tell her, please reverse mentor me. Mm. And I'm three times her age. So, you know, it, it's incredible the, the kind of knowledge they have. And you're so right. But now moving on, um, Ishan, I'd love to come back to your journey. And my viewers and listeners love to get to know my guest a little better. I've got a, three of our questions for you, which I call personal questions. Mm-hmm. In an amazing career, both as a manager, a top leader, board member, entrepreneur, if you were to look back at life, what would you say are three key milestones or pivot points that you can think of? So the first I've already mentioned, which is moving from manager to entrepreneur, okay. big pivot point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the second would be realizing that, you know, uh, CK, who's died now, mm-hmm. CK Prilad, you yeah. said, Thing, you know, that do you have 30 years experience or do you have one year's experience repeated 30, 30 times? times? Very well said. Hmm. Okay. So, and I think all of us are guilty of that to some stage. Hmm. And I had mentioned that earlier in terms of, you know, we see environment spirit and we're not investing in ourselves pivoting. Absolutely. And I wish, I mean, in terms of pivot, I did it again by taking a sabbatical, you know, I was invited um, by Harvard to be a, a fellow of the yeah. Advanced Leadership Institute. And I wish I'd done that five years earlier. And I think that the, the pivoting of yourself, and I'm very glad I did it because it changed my perspective. You know, you don't retire or give up or sell companies. Mm. You know, that's part of your life journey. And how do you reinvent yourself? Like you're talking about so many things you do. Today, I sit on a global advisory for a fintech. Mm. I sit on the board of an Indian bank. I sit on the advisory council of environment and sanitation with FIKI. I sit on an educational institution advisory board. I'm working with a friend of mine who is a global leader in plastics, et cetera, out of New York and how to talk, you know, we're in discussion with the government of India in terms of how to make this a huge kind of revolution Mm. from an evolution. Mm. Uh, These are things which I think in my mind keep me fresh. And none of these things I know. Mm. So again, I would say that's a big pivot. And I told myself when I came back from Boston in 2017 Mm -hmm. that I am first going to do nothing that I knew earlier. Mm. 
Mm. And uh, you, in a certain sense, I mean, you know, like uh, if you're in the content game, you have mm. some sense of customers and okay. things like that. But uh, where education is going, where mm. really cutting edge content is going, where fintech is going with this whole, uh, where, where NFTs are going. Right. We're currently in a conversation with somebody we're talking to about, you know, the whole NFT thing and the whole crypto thing out of the US. Mm. So two things. One, whenever I've dealt with people smarter than me, whether they're young or old, and I felt that I was learning and they felt I was contributing, it's been a party. Amazing. Mm. And whenever I thought that I knew everything, there's been no fun at all. Mm. So I think that if you take a look at life's major pivots, whenever I've managed to do that, mm. and as a senior citizen, I'm in that phase now where it's not about uh, making a little more money because in our generation, most of us have more than we need. We may not have what we want, Absolutely. but most of us have more than we need, Absolutely. for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and, uh, like a friend of mine in Boston used to tease me when I used to try to save money. He says, great, great, save some more, your grandchild will have a party. <laughs> so, you know, so actually, you know, you, you can have zeros, but the point is, how do you keep yourself relevant? How do you keep yourself in a learning mode and then you you give and take. Mm. It's not just about giving back. I think it's about you, you should be selfish and take as well. I agree. I agree with you. Uh, you know, so, uh, I, I no, well discuss. said. Well said. Well said. So, Shan, I've got time for one more question, and I'm trying to debate what to ask you, but I'm going to ask you a question on failure. Mm. Um, I've often said that parents in India don't teach children it's okay to fail. We've all been taught, come first in class, go to head of the line, etc. And that manifests itself in our behavior patterns. So you live in Mumbai, you don't see it too often. I live in Delhi. Uh, three people, three lanes that are traffic lights, live behind cars. Why? Because my car must be first. Yet we fail, we learn. I want to know from you, what have been some of your learnings from some of your mistakes? I would answer that question in two parts. One, your parents... If they think what you're doing is absolutely right, then you're doing the wrong thing. Correct. Okay, mm-hmm. uh-huh. Because I come from a family where one is a doctor, one is an architect, engineer. And for many years, my parents used to apologize for me. Okay, <laughs> They didn't understand MBA, didn't understand advertising. Correct. And they would keep saying he keeps going abroad very often because that was the status symbol. Mm-hmm. Okay, So that's one part. Mm-hmm. If your parents get exactly what you're doing, then you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the second part is, I think that I don't want to be cliche and say every failure is a teacher. I'll put it another way. I mean, I think I think my last company that I did in out of home digital, I felt I wasn't capitalized enough and I was nervous to grow because I was making losses. I wasn't used to this, what youngsters are comfortable with today, with your losses being more than your revenue. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the company I tied up with is today twenty billion dollars on NASDAQ. I lost courage. Mm-hmm. Okay, it was Focus Media out of China. Mm-hmm. They were the most successful. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they pivoted into QR codes and this and that. Mm-hmm. And I, I lost courage. And maybe I should have been 35 to do that. Mm-hmm. Even now I'm looking at these young companies, not like kind of the exceptions. Mm-hmm. Most young companies, you look at their revenue and look at their losses. The losses are more than their revenue. I cannot handle that emotionally. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that was, to my mind, if I wasn't mentally prepared, it is a big failure for me to get into something mm. where you have to have the courage Correct. to lose shit loads of money. Because mm. I always came from how much cash are we throwing? You know, what kind of, you know, where am I breaking even in year one or year mm. four? Mm. Okay. As long as I had that going for me, I was in my comfort zone. I got into rapid, and despite the fact that the partner that I had private equity, who incidentally shut down, that was the reason, but Initially, they kept saying, you're so nervous. We want to give you 20 million more. We want to give you. You shouldn't listen. You know, you should just do what you're comfortable with. Okay. Because if you're not comfortable with it, you will create failure. Hmm. Well said. Ishan, on that note, uh, I just want to say thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for almost taking me down memory lane because, yes. you know, yes. you and I have been friends since Calcutta. And similar generations. Early 80s generations. and same vintage. Uh, but thank you for talking to me about so many new things that are happening in the world of advertising, communication, social media, influencers. And most importantly, thank you for sharing such deep thoughts about your own journey with me. 
Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Ashutosh. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.